Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Mornings with Mandisa and friends. <laughs> this morning is going to look a little bit different than I had initially planned on. I'll explain it a little bit more later, but I, I really want to start with some worship. And I got some singing friends with me, <laughs> um, but they're more than singers; they're worshipers. Um, I'm wearing a shirt right now by my friend, friend Jamie Jamgoshen. It says, "Worship in the waiting." <laughs> Those that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. And I'm feeling really, really weak this morning. We're going to wait on the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. Because the Lord has anointed me <laughs> to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up broken to proclaim freedom yeah. for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor this is the year of the Lord's favor and somebody right now is thinking this does not feel like the year of the Lord's favor y'all it is not about what it feels like I declare this is the year of the Lord's favor do you know that we just celebrated the new Jewish year, Rosh Hashanah, was this weekend. So happy new year. <laughs> I know that in Western culture that we're in 2020, but when this was written, Isaiah 61, this was written in the Middle East. And I think it's not a coincidence that right after the year turned over to 5781, which is the Jewish year, right after that, the events that happened yesterday started to try to roll in and cover, blanket us with darkness. But God, but God. This is the year of the Lord's favor. And so I speak to anybody who is battling with the spirit of heaviness. I speak to anybody who is wrestling with darkness, with depression, with anxiety, with questioning your identity. I speak to you and I say, this is the year of the Lord's favor. And the day of vengeance of our God. <laughs> Come on, Jesus. Would you? make the enemy sorry that he ever messed with us. This is the day of vengeance for our God. You will comfort all who mourn. We speak comfort over the Chambers family right now. We speak comfort over Brianna Taylor's family right now. Would you comfort all who mourn? And would you provide for those who grieve in Zion? Would you bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes? And the oil of joy instead of mourning? 
than a garment of praise Hallelujah. instead of a spirit of despair we will be called oaks of righteousness a planting of the Lord for the display of your splendor <laughs> You will rebuild the ancient ruins and you will restore the places long devastated. You will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. We speak to Louisville right now. God is renewing your city. Strangers will shepherd our flocks and foreigners will work our fields and vineyards and we will be called priests of the Lord. We will be named ministers of our God. <laughs> we will feed on the wealth of nations. <laughs> we are in Way Nation Studios right now, y'all. <laughs> because God will make a way for the nations. <laughs> Yes, and in our riches we will boast instead of our shame instead of your shame you will receive a double portion yes. instead of disgrace <laughs> you will rejoice in your inheritance and you will inherit a double portion in your land and everlasting joy will be yours for I the Lord says I love justice I hate robbery and wrongdoing and God says in my faithfulness I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples all who see them will acknowledge that they are a people that the Lord has blessed I greatly delight in the Lord my soul rejoices in my God for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness <laughs> as a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with jewels for as the soil makes the sprout come up and the garden causes seeds to grow so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations days may be darkest but your light is greater you light our way God you light our way yes when evil is rising you're rising higher with power to save and power to save you keep hope alive you keep hope alive from the beginning to end your word never fails you keep hope alive because you are alive jesus you are alive death had a stronghold death had a stronghold your life was stronger rose from the grave rose up from the grave when evil is rising when evil is rising you're rising higher with power to save with power to save you keep hope alive you keep hope alive you keep hope alive from the beginning to end your word never fails you keep hope alive because you are alive 
in this morning weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning in the morning we lay our request before you oh god and we wait in expectation for your answer Thank you, Jesus. God, my heart is broken right now, and I'm I'm wrestling in this moment. I feel like I'm trying to press through a fog. I feel like I'm trying to like stir up this joy. I feel like I'm trying to like put on a happy face. I feel like I'm trying to just turn it around, and it's not working. <laughs> Yeah, we'll say that. We see dimly now, but we will see clearly later. Yes, we will. That's right. We look to you, Jesus. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Our hope. Yes. Jesus. Yes. Lacey, will you sing I look to you? Just even if it's one line. Oh, you can change the key if you want. <laughs> God, I look to you. Yes. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision, yes, to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Jesus, give me wisdom. Yes, yes. You know just what to do, and I will love you, Lord, my God. And I will love you, Lord, my shield. And I will love you, Lord, my God. Forever, all my days, I will love you. God. We sing hallelujah. And hallelujah, our God. Hallelujah, our God reigns. And hallelujah, our God reigns. Forever, all my days. Hallelujah, forever, all my, forever, all my days. Hallelujah. In the middle of tragedy, forever, all my days. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful place. And the things of earth will grow strange. He did. 
Tanisha Brittle said, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. That's Proverbs chapter three, verses five through six. <laughs> Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Go ahead, Ronald. You know what to do. <laughs> Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overwhelmed by your presence. Jennifer Duchette's room, Lord, would you be with her today in brokenness? 
brokenness and heartache and pain. She watch over the rooms right now in Louisville. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Would you hover over the streets? Take away violence. justice and righteousness. Mishpat and Sedekah, we call forth your justice. We call forth your righteousness. Holy Spirit, fill the room. Fill the courthouses. Lord, we call forth the Deborah. We call forth the Deborah, the righteous judge that is going to sit on the Supreme Court. We call forth the Deborah. God, we know that you are a God of justice, that you care about justice and righteousness, and that when we, your children, care about justice and righteousness, when we care about Mishpat and Sedekah, that is the throne that you are built on. The Bible says that the throne that you are built on is built of Mishpat, justice, and righteousness, Sedekah. And black people in this country do not feel We feel broken. We feel ignored. Stop. You never stop. You never stop. You never stop. 
never stop, you never stop. You are way maker, miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness is my God. That is who you are. That is who you never sleep. You are your way maker, miracle work, promise keep. two days ago and then my Wi-Fi went out <laughs> and so I knew we couldn't do it at my house the way that we were planning on doing it and I needed a place to do this <laughs> you're so strategic God and in the same way that before the foundations of the earth you knew that this day would be here September 24th wow Jesus me to do Mornings with Mandisa on the 24th of every month. Wow. It's on the kingdom calendar. That's right. <laughs> and I didn't know why. I was like, why 24? Like, I don't even know what 24 is about other than Jack Bauer and <laughs> my favorite television show of all time. I was like, why 24, God? But you knew. You knew. Of what Graham Cook said that you walk from our future into our present. Isn't that what it says? You knew, knew for the foundation of earth yes, that August 24th was going to mean something, that September 24th was going to mean something, that October 24th is going to mean something, November 24th and December 24th. And even as I say that, I feel you saying, man, it's every day means something. <laughs> But there's something about 24 that you've been speaking. Maybe it's just me. But you knew what would happen yesterday. And you knew that on September 24th that we need to gather as community and worship and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways. And then you would hear from heaven. You would forgive our sins and you would heal our land. And so that's what we are doing here today. We are coming to as community here with one of my very best friends. <laughs> you knew, you knew. My counselor is sitting over there. She's sitting in the corner. She's about to the school. Chiropractor, one of the godliest men that I have ever met in my life. Amen. A prophet of the Lord is sitting right there on the couch. <laughs> my dog is interceding for us. I feel that Kai <laughs> is interceding for us right now. <laughs> Sweet little Yaya, Lisi's Lisa's daughter is sitting over there and she is just staring at a screen right now. <laughs> and I feel like you're doing something right now with her. Do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Hi, honey. <laughs> Starkey Robertson says, we're seeking your face today, Lord. That's what we're doing. We're gathering together as community and we are seeking your face. Anna's eyes have been opened so much more this past week. God knows what he's doing for sure. Yes, he does, Anna. Lord, I'm not clear on everything that you're doing, but I know that you're doing something right now. That's right. You are doing something right now. Yes. So I don't know what the rest of this day is going to look like. We've got another hour that we're going to be together, Anna. Thank you. I thank you that that heaviness broke yeah. thank you. on me anyway. That as we put on a garment of praise, that we 
cloaked it over the spirit of heaviness and somehow it's like it was an invisible cloak and the spirit of heaviness it feels like it was steam that just started dissipating off would you do that over yes. our world right now, wherever there is a spirit of heaviness? Yes, Lord. Would you help us put on a garment of praise? Would you lift that spirit of heaviness? power. You could raise people from the dead and you say, God, that we will do the things that you did and even greater things. I can't even imagine how that's possible, that we could do even greater things. But you said it, Jesus. And if you said it, we believe it. If you said it, we believe it. Because right. <laughs> you're a man of your word. Thank you, Jesus. All things are possible. When we believe, all chains are breakable. When we receive your way, you keep your promises. If you said it, we believe it. If you said it, if you said it, we believe it. Yes. You said it. Yes, you did. So we believe it. Mm. That we can do all things. Right. All things. <laughs> we can do hard things, y'all. We yes. can do hard yes. things. Right. We can do the things that look impossible. Oh, we can. We can. Yeah, we can. We can overcome depression. Mm. Yes. Amen. Mm. We can overcome anxiety. Yes. We can walk in freedom. Orphan spirit. Yeah, you say that, Tammy. We can overcome an orphan spirit, <laughs> a poverty spirit. Yeah, it's not God's plan. That's right. That's right. 
what else? What else can we overcome? What else can we? There's no room for guilt, shame, or condemnation. That's in the right. Kingdom of God. Yeah. We can overcome that. We can overcome. That is more mm. than a funky song that you can dance to, y'all. We are <laughs> overcomers. Mm. Come on, good. We can come together as a country. That's right, Jennifer. That's good. Hatred, we can overcome hatred. We can overcome hatred mm -hmm. for the glory of your kingdom. Mm -hmm. yeah. God can turn this thing around. That's right. And he's gonna use us to do it as his hands and his feet. He's gonna use us, y'all. Every conversation, every difficult conversation, Every table that looks like this with black people and white people and Filipino people <laughs> and Armenian and Armenian people, people and old people <laughs> and <laughs> young people. Come on. It's good. This is how it's gonna break. It's good. At the table. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. That's right, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. No weapon. Y'all, wow. the devil is a lie. The devil is a lie, and he is trying, he's trying to defeat us relationally. Mm -hmm. He's trying to make the body of Christ divided. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's trying to raise up little ones yes. that will hate. But we say, not today, Satan. Oh, not today. We are raising up young girls and young boys, young black girls and young black boys that carry the spirit of joy yeah. for the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. In Jesus' name. We're using, we're taking, God is using single mothers. Yeah, that's right. To raise up godly girls and godly boys. Yes. Yeah. He's raising mothers of young girls. He's raising mothers of old girls and old boys. He's using single, all the single ladies. Yes, he is. He's using us to raise up a generation of people who know this is how we fight our battles. At the table, in worship, together, in prayer. Say it again. We can do hard things together. We can't do hard things alone. Together as our friends for king and country say. Say it again. He's going to play. Yes. Do it, Ronald. Ronald is over here, y'all. Another, another godly man. Another good godly black man. <laughs> this is how we fight our battles. Yes, take a moment. Maybe yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is how we do it. That's it. Find Satan in the name of Jesus. Yeah, y'all sing it out. We submit ourselves to you, God. This is how we fight our battles. And this is how we fight our battles. We resist the enemy in the name of Jesus. This is how we fight. This is how we fight our battles. Instead of a spirit of heaviness, this is how we fight. This is how we fight. We command the spirit of depression to be gone in the name of Jesus. This is how we fight. This is how we fight our battles in unity, in worship, in prayer. This is how we fight our battles in unity, in worship. Shout 
protect them, give them wisdom and passion for your word. That's right. That's right, Martha. Martha, Martha, Martha. <laughs> My friend, um, Ronnie Freeman, He's watching Ronnie. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Ronnie. Ronnie is 47 today. I don't think he would Ooh, mind me God. saying that. Oh, Ronnie. Okay. Look, I'm gonna be 44 next Friday. <laughs> it's a number. And I'll, it's a number. It's a number. Right. And as Whitney Houston said in Waiting to Exhale, I still look good. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> so Ronnie Freeman, he um he's got an album coming out next week, I believe. Jamie Jam Goshen, she has an album coming out next week, October 2nd. My birthday. <laughs> Worship in the waiting. Um, but Ronnie has a song that he played for me um, that talks about that nothing is wasted, that God uses everything, everything for his good, for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. And so I asked Ronnie if he would just play it for us. Um, and so I'm going to ask my friends if they would play Ronnie Freeman. He's in California. Take it away, Ronnie. Hey, Mandisa, everybody. Hey, Mandisa, everybody. Mandisa, thank you so much for having me here. Um, so I'd like to share my first single off my new record with you. Uh, my record comes out in October, but the single comes out today, hopefully today, um, if not today, tomorrow. It's called You Don't Waste Anything. I heard a sermon um, several years ago, and the pastor said, he wastes nothing. God wastes nothing. And when you start thinking about, if you go down memory lane and think about your history with God and all the times you said no to him. All the times that he invited you into uh, really intimacy with him, a deeper understanding of his nature, a deeper understanding of your identity in him. And those times where we ran the other direction for who knows what reasons are. God, God knows all those reasons. And he's, and love is patient. <laughs> so love is kind. 
But one of the things that Jesus paid for on the cross with his blood was to redeem everything. And um, today on my birthday, it's, it's no mistake, it's no coincidence that I'm singing this song, You Don't Waste Anything. When I look back over my 47 years of life, and I think about all the moments that I could have, I could call regrets today. I could say, I wish I'd done this different. I wish I'd done that different. And honestly, what I'm discovering is it's just kind of a waste of, of time and energy um, to say, I wish I could have. Because what I'm discovering about in my relationship with the Lord is once I surrender things over to him, he doesn't just recycle and piece things back together. Like he makes all things new, all things new. So that means some mistake I made in the past, maybe yesterday, maybe today, once surrendered to him, this is why a confessional lifestyle is so important with the father, not out of fear that he's going to be mad at me or, you know, have his arms folded, but this get, keep the air clean, keep the connection um, there and connected with him at all times. But the second that I can surrender those things to him, repent of those things, if you will, um, he takes those things. It's almost like I see him just with his with his blood, with his power, with his love and compassion, and he makes them new. So now things that I could call regrets now are my victories because they've been redeemed into compassion, empathy, wisdom, understanding. So that means I can write a song like this and somebody all of a sudden goes, oh man, I needed to hear that today. That I identify with that. Well, that came out of my brokenness. What you're going to hear today came out of my journey with God. And so that even even writing a song about it and being able to communicate it is, is, is a picture in and of itself of the redeeming work of God in my life. And it isn't just my life. It's your life. So the invitation for us today is to surrender. Surrender. We get to let go of shame and fear and just say, Lord, it's yours. You can have it. I want this connection to be maintained at all times because this is my lifeline. This is it. So long preachy intro for the song, You Don't Waste Anything. I question if regrets are true since I surrendered my life to you. You redeem retroactively now Every day of my history is brand new Cause you don't waste anything No, you don't waste anything Everything I wish I could do over, you have 
anything. No, you don't waste anything. I know you and you use everything. No, you don't waste anything. Thank you, Lord. Everything I thought was lost has been recovered by your love. Everything I wish I could do, all the you have covered by your blood. You don't waste anything. Oh, you don't waste anything. You don't waste anything. No, you don't waste anything. He waste nothing. He waste nothing. Everything belongs. The garbage can is empty. <laughs> he waste nothing. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. This is all good news for us today. Receive it as a gift from him. This truth, this powerful truth about his nature, about the work of the cross, about the resurrection. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blessings on all of you. Blessings on all of you. Thank you, Ronnie. I'm holding this up because I want y'all, Jake, getting close to my phone. There you go. I just downloaded You Don't Waste Anything by Ronnie Freeman. It is available now. It's available now. And his full album is coming out. Uh, did he say next week? Yeah, I don't know. Don't get me lying. But get this song for now and follow Ronnie Freeman on Instagram and Facebook. I'm not sure if he's on Twitter um, because he is an anointed man of God. And Ronnie has a story. Um, Ronnie has a story. <laughs> we all have stories. Yes. And... Um, You know, my story involves depression, anxiety, a spirit of heaviness, but God. <laughs> um, God is teaching me how to how to walk through that with um, hope and with faith and um, I've got some new friends up here with me who will notice. This is my counselor. This is Danielle Boker. I used to say Bowker, but it's bow, like a bow, right? Bowker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I met Danielle through another friend of mine. Um, I've been looking for a good counselor and I've had several that I've enjoyed, but I've never found one that was like, this is it. This is it. <laughs> Um, she's changed my life, y'all. And, you know, I know that, I don't know how many people are watching right now, but I know a lot of people feel a lot of different ways as followers of Jesus about counseling. Let me just say loud and clear for the world to hear, I believe in counseling. Mm. I'm a big fan of it. And um, I can say that because God has changed my life through it. Yes. Um, God has changed my life through this woman who loves Jesus, <laughs> is spirit-filled, and um, she has walked me through the valley of the shadow of death in a lot of ways. And um, we've become friends. <laughs> it's funny, when we're doing like the counseling thing, I've got one number that I text, it's like the professional thing, and then I've got another number that I text when we're friends. So <laughs> yesterday we were texting one another and we we're making an appointment, and then I switched to her other number to say, okay, now we're friends. <laughs> so, I like to have 
things, you know, in their little boxes. Right. So um, <laughs> if you were in Middle Tennessee, um, what's your website? It's dbcounseling.com. For Danielle Boker, dbcounseling.com. Um, I can't recommend anybody more highly than I can yeah. recommend this woman. So we're going to talk a little bit about our counseling journey and just some of the things that we have walked through, mm -hmm. but we got a man at the table. Yes. <laughs> this is Dr. Skye. Is your first name Greg? Greg. I never knew that until this morning. <laughs> um, I met Dr. Skye through my friend Tammy, who is now sitting right there. Um, Tammy, you know, she was, she did not know she was going to be on camera this morning. <laughs> Um, at the last minute, I just asked her, hey, would you come up here and sing with us? Uh, because we're pivoting this morning. Just looks a little bit different than we were initially planning. But I got adjusted by Dr. Sky. Was that two days ago as well? Yes. Oh, my goodness. What happened two days ago? So... Um, I just asked him, we went live on, my friends here on Facebook, um, you saw me go live with him, and I just asked him after he was done, I was like, hey, what you doing on Thursday morning at 7 a.m.? And so he just gracious, graciously agreed to join us up here. And again, I will say this, I don't know much about chiropractors, to be honest. I met him through my friend Tammy, who has been, how long have you and Tammy been? Working least, with each other. At least 10 years. Wow. <clears throat> Every bit of 10. How many? 12 years. 12 years. Yeah. So I, when I was in the deep dark, 2014 to 2016, you all know this about my story. Um, that was the season where I, I shut everybody out, including, matter of fact, everybody sitting here at this table, except my new, well, except my new friends. I shut all of them out. Tammy over there. Um, yeah, as a matter of fact, I think at one point, all of you guys came to my house, didn't you? Oh my gosh. You left a plant on my door. A basket. But, a uh, basket with Lindsay McCall. Yep. Wow. So y'all, for those of you who don't know, um, my friend Keisha passed away. Wow. <laughs> yeah, she passed away in 2014 right after I released the song and the album Overcomer. That song and that album was for her. Um, and so when she passed away, I was mad. I was mad at God. And I did not do what we just did this morning. Mm -hmm. I sat in that heaviness and um, I ate and I gained 200 pounds in two years. I got up to 400 pounds, y'all, after I had lost a lot of weight. And so anyway, that. I will just say um, I started seeing him during that time because my back was hurting. And it's so funny because here I was weighing 400 pounds saying, I don't know why my back is hurting. <laughs> what did you think when I came into your office and I was saying that I had a bad back and I was like, I don't know what's going on. You knew what was going on, didn't you? <clears throat> I can't say completely. I can just say that. The body manifests the condition of your heart, your your spirit, and your mind. Okay, say that time. Body manifests the spirit of your heart and mind. Yes, it's all. But the the report card is what's going on physically. Yeah. Now, most of the time, if there's a trauma to your body, that can be healed in a fairly quick amount of time. But the deep stuff, the emotional wounds, the yeah. spiritual damage that we've all experienced in life that's still in there mm -hmm. it's it's in there and, and we walk through that over and over it's in the, it's like a, a broken record that replays itself over and over so we have to find a way to break and deconstruct that energy yeah to do that and and there is a way yeah See? that's right he's the one he who knows us so well that <clears throat> so for crying out loud if <laughs> two or more are gathered together in his name he's in the midst yes. of us let's consult the great physician yes. so good. and that's what i choose to do okay. i choose to do that and he is available yeah. and wants to help yeah. us all that's his heart's desire yeah. is that we not walk in this this brokenness but we be restored yes. and renewed mm -hmm. back to as 
state that he designed us in. And so that requires some internal work. Yeah. It's it's some spiritual surgery that only he can do. He's the only one qualified to do that. And God yeah. is that way. So okay. that that's what I choose to do. And so I have the privilege to see the child of God in whoever shows up. Yes. And I start speaking to that one. That's what he does, y'all. Yeah. That's exactly what you do. So when you were with me, um, so let's say two days ago. Okay. You, yes, you do the physical thing. Like you will do this whole, I don't know. Adjust the body. Adjust the body. Chiropractor, okay? It's a real important part. The yeah. physical part of who you are, your structure, has a lot to do with how your body functions. Newsflash, it is important. Okay, real yeah. important, but it's not the only thing that makes you you. Wow. You know, you are a spiritual being. You That's are right. an emotional being. Mm -hmm. You experience toxins and, and mm -hmm. allergies and electromagnetic interference, yes. and you've got all these nutritional deficiencies, mm -hmm. and the expression is your health or your disease, and it's a perfect response. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So if you don't like what's going on, let's examine what's going okay. in, okay. what has gone in, mm -hmm. and what we can do to change it. So when you say that, because I'm thinking about that season. Yeah. I was eating nothing but sugar, mm -hmm. nothing but fast food. Yeah. That was not just having an effect on me gaining weight. That also, You're saying that that actually was affecting what was happening in my body. You were trying to protect yourself from being hurt more. Mm -hmm. You know, Danielle, right. she can talk to you about right. it. She has. I'm, we try to insulate ourselves from the pain and, and mm -hmm. that sugar is a it's a molecule that you'll want more and more of. It's a part of this this food toxic substance that we're presented with every day, this stuff, you know, even though it looks good and we all our mouths watering when we look at it, it's, you know what, it's probably not the best thing for us to choose to put in our bodies. So with that being said, we got to get educated. We got to make better choices. We got to discipline the flesh. We got to let the flesh work for us and not us work for the flesh. Okay, that's, that's so good. The, that's the spiritual order. You yeah. are a spiritual child of God and you have a head that is giving us information. If we choose to yeah. listen yeah. and get still and quiet, then we'll know what his will is for your life. So let me ask this because I battle with shame, as my counselor knows very well. And so there's something about what we just said that made me, like I hear the enemy saying, See, mm -hmm. you did it wrong. You shouldn't be eating those muffins, Mandisa. Like you, sh like I, I hear that. That is an arrow that the enemy is flinging at me right now. Didn't you mention there's no condemnation in those yes. who are in Christ Jesus? <laughs> yes. I thought I heard that. I did, but there's also we grow in wisdom, right? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. I know Absolutely. my whole health journey. I had a bit of my emotional well-being. Mm -hmm. Any disorder and is not healthy in my spiritual well-being mm -hmm. is any kind of disorder. My body is not going to be in perfect order. And for me, you know my journey. Yeah. I did have to learn how it a certain way so that I could be whole and yeah. heal. You know, it's not good for me. Sugar, forget, dairy, forget. No, not everybody has to follow that. So can I ask but about that? You said gluten is not good for me. Personally. And so I guess here's my question. Because you would say the same, right? Gluten is not good for you? Yeah, because okay. I'm not well. Right. So it makes me not feel good. But gluten is not necessarily bad, no, right? right? Not okay. at all. It it's, depends on your body, what yeah, you're going true. through, okay. what you're predisposed yeah. to, if you're on a healing journey. I've gotten so far in my healing journey now that I, I do have some in some ways and I don't react. I think in that part of life with God, it's learning mm -hmm. how to live this healthy lifestyle, mind, body, soul, spirit, every way. Mm -hmm. Not just what we eat, what we put in our mind, what we put in our thoughts, what we're feeding right. our spirit with. That shame thing. Shame nearly took me out yeah. too because it just makes you feel like yes. awful. Yeah. That, one of my favorite scriptures is in Psalm 34, and it says... Um, those who look to him are radiant I know, I know and their faces are never covered with shame. And it's so funny when people say, your skin is glowing. And I'm like, well, I got oily skin. But here's what I realized. Y'all, it's the radiance yeah, that yeah, comes yeah, from yeah, Jesus. It, out, it right? really, it bursts out. Burst. That's right. And so it's interesting that I battle with depression when people always say, gosh, you carry such joy. Sure. And so I guess I feel like there is somebody who's watching and I want you to know the very thing that the enemy is trying to use to take you out, probably the area God is going to use as a weapon right. to take him out. 
And so if you battle with depression and anxiety, just know God will turn that thing around and he will make the devil sorry that he ever messed with you in the first place because he'll use it as your ministry. And I think that about you two in particular, like with the things that you're wrestling with your body and just um, sickness, I really believe God is going to use your testimony as you're walking through it. Like you're not even on the other side of it. God is going to use your testimony to set the captives free. Yeah. I believe I'm on the other side. Amen. And I think the coolest thing about when you are in your freedom and healing is watching other people. But I want to push back on that a little bit. Yeah. I think even on your journey of freedom, God uses you Absolutely. To in those areas to yeah. see other people. Yeah. Accessory. I would say this. I still wrestle with depression. I, I went dark four days ago. So um, I'm not on the other side of it, but I see your comments saying that um, my testimony is encouraging you. And so I'm not, I'm walking this thing out day by day, one foot in front of the other. And so I just, I don't know. I feel like there's somebody watching. You need to know what our friend Ronnie just saying. God does not waste anything. He's not going to waste anything. Um, I want to ask you, For people who battle with anxiety and depression, Mm -hmm. and they say, I can't afford a counselor, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what do they do? There are options. Um, There are options available. A lot of counselors provide services on a sliding scale that you can find. Um, There is a website that I love called Open Path Collective. It's openpathcollective.org. And you can look for a counselor on there, and everyone on there is willing to provide their services between $40 and $60 a session. Mm -hmm. So, And it has a lot of different counselors available. Okay. So there are there are options. Mm-hmm. I would say um, don't let money be the barrier. Yes. Reach out and communicate with a counselor. Mm-hmm. If a client comes to me and says, I'm really struggling financially, we'll work it out yeah. um, because it's more important for them to, to get that care. And I know that it'll come back later. Yeah, that's right. It's fine. Well, I'm wondering if you say that as a Jesus follower. <laughs> I don't know that every counselor would right, say that, but right. I can say that about her. <laughs> she knows it's going to come back around to her. So um, if you are in Middle Tennessee, dbcounseling.com. Yep. Mm-hmm. And Sky Chiropractic. Correct. Dot com. That's right. Okay. But you're booked up. Like, you got a lot of people. Well, what's <laughs> cool is that two of my kids are also chiropractors that oh, work with right. me. It's wow. a family practice. Yes. And so I always make time for people who yeah. need me to. Okay. So we, awesome? we can take care of anybody who needs some care. I love that. Um, I want to yes. ask this just kind of in general to anybody here. I felt myself this morning um, with the heaviness mm-hmm. that was hovering. And um, we went to something a few months ago that talked about the importance of lament. Mm-hmm. And I found myself trying to push past that. I was like, oh, I need to put on a garment of praise. I need to stir it up. I need to have joy. And I just, as much as I tried to do it, I just it would not break. It honestly didn't break until I sat here at the table with you all. But can we talk about a lot of us are feeling angry and sad and just broken and dark. Can you talk about lament and the importance of it and the difference in lamenting and walking with the spirit of heaviness? Is there a difference? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to step on your toes. I think so. And I think it's a very biblical thing. I mean, you look at the Old Testament, people literally tearing their robes and Mm -hmm. and putting ash and sackcloth Mm -hmm. on. I feel like our society and even in evangelical circles, we want to have the joy of the Lord all the time. And, you know, we ask that the question, how are you doing? And we don't want to like, I'm speaking for myself, but Mm -hmm. I think I might also be speaking for, you know, the majority of us. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to say, oh, I'm fine or I'll be okay. Mm -hmm. But the reality is this year has been hard for a lot of people, including Christians. And I think that it's important for us to be honest Mm -hmm. with how we're really doing. And, you know, maybe not going into like graphic detail, but saying like, you know, I'm not doing okay today. I could use some prayer. Mm -hmm. Um, Is is there 
something in me, when I hear that, I think, well, I'm confessing out of my mouth that I'm not doing okay. And I guess I know there's different schools of thought about that. Like, don't speak out, you know, negative, speak love. So how do you respond to that? I would just say, like, I think there's, there is healing and even admitting and, and being honest with who you truly are. Like, I feel like it's, it might, and you can speak to this, there is an unhealthiness when we can't even Absolutely. admit that there's some core things. Mm-hmm. Like anger is actually a, like an indicator that something is actually wrong. Like mm-hmm. something's been violated, yeah, right. obviously. Um, anyway, but I think that it's important to to sit in our grief when it's time to grieve. The Bible says, mourn with, with those, those who mourn. mourn. It doesn't just say, like, yeah. you know. And he says, come to me, he, everyone who's heavy, yeah. and I will, I will give, give you rest. rest. So there's a permission there not to be like, to not admit that you're, I'm heavy today. Yeah. Yeah. And so I am coming to you with my lament. I am coming to you with my cries. Um, and I know you're going to give me rest. I don't know how, yeah. but I, I'm going to keep coming supplication like I'm gonna keep crying out because I trust you and good and I can crawl up underneath your arms when I need it yeah there's permission there and that doesn't mean that we don't have faith we doesn't have to be in either one or. of the other yeah. yeah um I think actually it feels to me like that's the most beautiful faith there could ever yeah. be that I'm vulnerable and I don't feel good and I'm scared I'm gonna come to you that's good mm-hmm. yeah and I'm, I'm just going to pray that there's an exchange, yeah. you know? Okay. Right. Yeah. It makes me think of um, another one of my favorite scriptures, Philippians 4, oh, yeah. verses 6 through 7, mm-hmm. um, that says, Don't be anxious yeah. about anything, mm-hmm. but in everything, with prayer and petition. And here's the part that is often left out, left out, with thanksgiving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so come to God with thanksgiving, but present your request to Him. Right. And then it says that the peace that passes understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And something I heard Rick Pino say recently was that if you're going to pray for the peace that passes understanding, you have to be willing to not understand sometimes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Ouch, right? Mm -hmm. And so... um, I guess what I'm wrestling with is because I know that I battle with depression and anxiety, how do I lament in a healthy way without going dark the way that I so often do. That's why I tend to just push past it and try to act like everything is okay. Mm -hmm. It's because I know what the deep dark feels like and I never want to go back there. Mm -hmm. Ellen, I think first key is to notice those things. Mm -hmm. Be aware and open to it. And just like Dr. Skye said, there is this mind, body, soul connection. um, And you might notice something in the way your body feels. Mm -hmm. That might be the trigger Mm -hmm. where you're like, like, oh, something's not right. It might be an emotion. It, this is why I ask you those things. When she we asked like, me where all, is it in your body? She asked me what that all the time, and I can never tell her. <laughs> and so it feels like there has been a disconnect between my feelings, my emotions, and my body. Right. And so how, if you just feel out of touch with your body, and I think mm-hmm. this comes from some childhood trauma, mm-hmm. there's the disconnect between, I just... I cover myself and what you said, I do. I Food is what I have always turned to, to protect myself. And so I think there's been a, a disconnect recently with my body and my emotions. So whenever you ask me, where do I feel it in my body? I'm like, I don't know. How do you get more in tune with your body? Right, and that's where we practice it. That's where you take moments where maybe just practicing mindfulness. And we did a practice where I just named body parts and yeah. said, focus on that body part yeah. when I say it. Um, just really trying to pay attention to what's going on in your body. Mm-hmm. You know when you're feeling anger. Yeah. Stop for a moment and just do a quick body scan. Where am I holding that in my body? Okay. Yeah. Sometimes we don't even notice that our shoulders are absolutely. Um, so um, you know, just trying to connect. Okay, okay what's now. that emotion that I'm feeling? Why? What was the trigger? Where is it in my body? Okay. And having that realization and noticing those things is really that first okay, step. That's good. Um, I Please. <laughs> she identified a good first step is the recognition mm-hmm. that something <clears throat> is perhaps not quite at ease in yourself. Mm-hmm. It's important to recognize it, but what do you do with that? Yeah. Right? And I'll tell, <clears throat> or I can suggest a few mm-hmm. things. 
One of the important keys to getting out of this fight or flight or this defensive physiology where your body is so kind of confused is breathing. Mm -hmm. It is so <laughs> basic. We yeah. don't think about it very often, but I'm telling you yeah. here, mm -hmm. breathing is the key to get you out of this state of, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, you know, there's a, a, a tsunami coming and mm -hmm. you know what? Things will be okay. okay. You know? So, the scripture that says, be still and know I'm God. Yeah. And another thing that the Lord's really pushed on me the last couple of days is fasting. Yeah. Fasting. Yeah. Empty yourself of some of this yes. stuff that requires so much energy Sweet. and just be really still and quiet. And yeah. and you'll find the clarity will come. The, the peace that we all are talking about mm -hmm. that we all desire. Mm -hmm. It's in us already. Yeah. See, we don't have to look for it. It's, it's in mm -hmm. us. Yeah. And when Christ went to the cross and he prayed that prayer, Father, I pray they may be one with me yes. as I am one with you yeah. so they may receive my peace and my joy. Mm -hmm. It's done. It's okay. finished. So yeah. because he's accomplished that for us, we're just a recipients of the goodness of God. Love that. A recipient. So you're not a doer, you're a being. That's okay. So I love that. Just be sometimes instead of, okay, what do I got to do? How can I, you know, that's getting wheels cranking and you know, the enemy loves to make you think, oh man, you can't, you can't do this. Yeah. How many times do you screw up in a day? I mean, okay. Well, that's all true and well, but the greatest battle that ever took place was on Golgotha, the place of the skull. Mm. And that is where the battlefield is today. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Think about it. So the mind. That's so good. You have to take captive the thoughts. Yes. You got to examine them. Where'd you come yeah. from? Are you true? Right. And if you're yes. not, get behind me. You've stolen too much of my okay. vitality so already. Absolutely. Get behind love, me. Love, and love, do love, it love. in the name of Jesus. And yes. before you know it, all of a sudden you'll go, where's all the drama? Mm. Yeah. You know what? I was feeling so rotten. So mm. you can acknowledge it, but you don't have to hang out and right. stay with okay. it. Right. Some negative thoughts might come in, but you don't have to invite them to have a cup of coffee. <laughs> right. You don't have to do it. You, Wait, so you say, don't have to choose you know to wear it. That's yeah. right. It's a choice That's whether you're actually wearing it. That's exactly and right. you can wow. visually just picture yourself taking, taking that it off. off. Good. Love that. Take that off and put on the armor. Yeah. yeah. And then move throughout your day. It's funny. That's we have got ten minutes left, and that's kind of what I wanted to do. I'm so glad that you said that. I want to put the armor on um, us yeah. and our friends watching. And I would love it if I could get each of us to take a piece of armor. Would you, um, just for a couple of minutes? Can I start with you? And would you, would you put help us to put on the helmet of salvation? There is a truth that Jesus Christ came, he conquered, he rose from the dead to do this. And it pleased God to send him so that he might defeat sin, which is to say death, which is to say the devil. That is why Christ was so obedient and so intentional about coming to accomplish what he did yeah. on that cross. And, and love held him to that cross. It was love for you and love for me. We all got to recognize our own part in this. He did it for you. And you better make it personal because he's the Savior. Yeah. Yahweh's salvation. Yeah. Yeshua. Yeah. This is who he is. That's right. So with that, we just mm -hmm. receive it. You can't you, Jesus. earn it. You don't deserve it. And yet Yet your yeah. heavenly father loves you that much that he left his place of honor Thank and he you. pierced the darkness. Mm -hmm. He came here after us Thank and he you. chose to leave the 99 to come after us. Mm -hmm. Make it personal. Make it personal. Yeah. It is real. Mm -hmm. yes. And it applies to every one of us. Yeah. So you better snug that on really yeah. tight and secure it because mm -hmm. that is foundational That's to right. our faith. And faith is another piece of that armor I heard. That's, yeah. We, we put on the helmet of salvation, God, and with it, we take captive every thought, every single thought, and we make it obedient to you. It has to bow to your own Jesus. When a thought comes in our mind that is not lined up with your truth, Father, with the helmet of salvation, we're going to take it captive, and we're going to say, no, that is not from God. That spirit of fear, that anger, we recognize that, and so we replace it with the spirit that brings love and a sound mind. Thank you, God. The 
helmet of salvation. We're going to have our eyes see the way that you see, see ourselves the way that you see us, and to see others the way that you see them, not as trees walking, (laughs) but as dearly loved children of God. With the helmet of salvation, that covers our ears. So we're going to choose today to hear your voice, to listen to your words, to listen to what you have to say. Would you help us to recognize the voice of truth, the voice of our Savior? And God, with the helmet of salvation that covers our mouths, God, would you help us to speak life? Lord, as we have this discussion today about our words, um, this is a fine line for me. To be honest with how I feel, but not to speak death, would you help us to know how to do that? That can only come from your spirit. Would you help us to make confessions of truth and not to line up our words with the enemy? Thank you, God. We put on we put on the breastplate of righteousness. Jamie, would you put that on us? God, we thank you that we are only righteous in you with what you have done for us. So, Father, that means that we do not have to walk in any shame. We've talked about this morning in any kind of guilt, Mm. in any kind of condemnation, because we are the righteousness of Christ in you, Jesus. So literally, I just pray right now, we picture ourselves not in who we think we are, but in you, Jesus. So we put that breastplate of righteousness. I just declare over people watching today, you are in right standing Mm. because of what Jesus did. Nothing that you can do on your own. No, no past mistake, no present mistake, no future mistake. You are the righteousness of Christ. So we just put that on. We apply that. We put that on today. So Father, we just say any kind of guilt, shame, condemnation, that is broken off right now. In Jesus' name. That's right. Name it. I even believe for some of you watching, there's going to be a new spring in your step as of today. There's going to be a newfound joy because you're not wearing that heavy, oh, but you don't know what I've done. You don't wear I've done. No, that's not who you are that's anymore. Right. You are a new creation in Christ. So, Amen. Father, we just apply that. And we thank you for what the blood of Jesus yeah. did thank so that we Jesus. could be in right standing. Thank you, Jesus. So that we could walk uprightly, not in our own works, God, not in trying to be some super spiritual, mm-hmm. hyper-Christian Lord. No, we are simply followers right. of the Most High. That's right. We are disciples of you, Jesus. Yeah. When we get it right and when we get it wrong, we yeah. are still yeah. in right standing. That's right. We have because this of your love. Um, that guards our heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I Jamie was just praying um, with respect righteousness. We have it because of you. Yes. It's impugned righteousness that you've given us. And so we put that on. We continue to go down the armor of God with the belt of truth. That's my favorite right now. And so I pray the belt of truth over everybody watching right now. That is our core support. That is what locks us into truth is bound right here at our waist. And when one of the things when Danielle always asks me, where do you feel it in my body? I usually feel it in my gut, in my core. And so I um, yeah, I'm just thinking about the ulcerative colitis that is in my intestines right now. I just feel like there has been a darkness that's tried to come at the core of truth. And so with that, I bind the Satan in the name of Jesus and I gird my core with the belt of truth. You are truth. You are the way, the truth, and the life. And so I would just wrap that around my stomach <laughs> right now where my gut is. We will walk in a place of truth today. Our feet are fitted with the redness that comes from the gospel of peace. Jean, would you put our shoes of peace on us right now? (laughs) Wow. Lord, we thank you that you give us your peace. That we can walk in peace Mm -hmm. even when it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. We thank you that your word says... Um, the peace of God, which transcends all yes, understanding, right. guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Yes. And so, God, put at our feet yes. that wherever we go, we are ambassadors yes. of your peace. And wherever there is chaos, that we would be yes. able to bring your peace in the situation. Wherever the yes. conflict, we would bring your peace. Yes. Um, and that's not necessarily to avoid the conflict, right. but to try to. Um, mm-hmm 
pretend that we see everything exactly the way the other person does, and even when we don't agree. That's right. We okay. thank you that your peace guards yes. us. We thank you that we can be the person in the room to change the atmosphere Absolutely. in the room because you give us your peace and that we can wear that. So we wear that today. Yeah. In your name. In Jesus' name. And then when we get to the point where we're coming under attack, you tell us to hold up the shield of faith. Danielle, would you clothe us with the shield of faith? Mm, Lord Jesus, help us to just hold that shield high today, yes. to know That's when right. the enemy is attacking <laughs> us, to know those spots yeah. that, that are weak for us, and to ask for you to come directly into them mm -hmm. and help us hold up that shield mm -hmm. against that attack, That's right. Lord. Help us to see what what it is for what it is right. that it is an enemy attack it is not us it is not something that we choose to wear today it is not a piece of our hearts lord help us to just pull up that That's shield right. and to protect our hearts mm -hmm. to protect that wellspring of life today that's Lord. Right. yeah so every that's what we use to extinguish every fiery dart that the enemy mm -hmm. shoots in our way you are who you say you are yes. you can do what you say you can do we are who you say we are yeah. and we can do all things through christ who gives us strength yeah. your word is alive and active mm -hmm. in us and that is the last piece of armor it is the sword of the spirit amy would you help us to pull out our sword to the spirit and to fight with the word of God. I pray right now for anyone who needs breakthrough, yeah. for anyone who needs healing, for anyone who is in a chaotic situation, mm -hmm. for anyone that needs anything, yes. that they would take the sword, which is the word of God, yeah. and they would claim the promises that he has spoken yes. in his word. Yes. It would that fill the faith, mm -hmm. even with things that they cannot see yet, with is a substance thing that we right. cannot see, with their shield and their sword, yeah. with the word, and speak truth. Speak truth. That situations would line up to the word, the truth. Yeah. That this country would line up to yes. the truth. Yes. We know what the truth That's is. Right. The truth is not for anyone else mm -hmm. to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not. Our truth. It's exactly. truth. That's just truth. Exactly. You are truth. And so we, um, but that's how we're going to fight today. Yes. And then, Lord, over all of these things, we're going to bind together with your love. Right. That's really yes. the last piece yes. of our arms. So it's your love. Yeah. We will love you, God, today. Mm -hmm. We will love our neighbors as ourselves today. Yes. And we, now that we are clothed in the armor of God, we will go for it into this day. <laughs> um, wearing the armor, because we are in the army of God. We are warriors in the spirit. We will worship in the waiting, yes. and we will carry your light wherever we go. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Thank you for joining us. For Mandy's and friends, we'll see you next month, October 24th. <laughs> Bye. Have a great day. Beautiful. <laughs> I pictured.